Since you're back and doing more shows now and you had done some way back in the day in the 80s, how does the reception and the vibe of the shows compare in the 80s or early 90s compared to now in Europe in the 2020s? Well, remember, I've never been to Europe before. This was the first time that I ever went to Europe. But if you're asking me to compare it to, it's comparable. I would say that the European crowds are more attentive. They buy merch. There's no fights there. They show up. The price wasn't that much. It was 25 euros at most of those shows that we did over there. And maybe that's like $30, you know, $30, $32. Everybody knows their history. Everybody comes with the with their vinyl. This is special to them over there when they can interact with the artist and actually get them to sign it. So by being more intimate, by maybe the venues being more intimate, you could kind of touch the artist. Where if it's a powerhouse show, you know, a Meek Mill show or something like that, you know, Benny the Butcher or something, even here in Philly, you can't always get so close to them. You know, you it might be not, you know, a 10,000 seat arena, yet you still ain't going to get close to them to be able to get your shit autographed. So it's good for me. It made me less nervous to try to go up there and, you know, succeed in my goal of of stealing every show, you know. In the back of my mind, I want to steal every show. And then it started to happen. I was like, oh, shit. The more I pray, the more I win. Who knew? Who knew? So we would go back to the hotel room because Ultra and them, they don't want to hang around after sound check. And we would, I would go and bomb sound check and make sure I got the photographer boy. So sound check became a routine for me to bomb it with no pressure. And then there's my IG footage, you know what I mean? So let's go bomb sound check. So I started getting hype about bombing sound check about it, show two. <laughs> so it's 13 of them, you know? And then how and what was the vibe like before Sed got there? And how did it change once he joined the yeah. tour? That's a great question. Before Sed got there, it was the Too Tough and Cool Keith show with, with TR Love and, and Mark Davis as the as the hype men outside. So they were saying it was kind of like an ultra karaoke because they were doing the hype man stuff. And I was, I was just trashing every ultra record, you know what I mean? Like doubles of, of, of uh, all of them. We had a whole playlist and they put together the playlist. One thing that was especially difficult was that some of the, some of the songs that had said G on them for the nine shows when he wasn't there. Well, they wanted me to cut it out on the fly. And that's a little hard for me, although for the first four shows, we did it and we cut it out on the fly. It was high pressure. It took away from me being able to be the scratch master to me having to be aware of when, you know, when his verse is supposed to automatically jump from, from you know, TR Love over Seth's verse to the third verse on Cool Keith. I don't know the songs that well. You know, I'm a member of Tough Girl. I probably know my own shit that well, but I didn't know theirs that well. But trust and believe. To make it easier for myself, I broke night in London one night and stayed up till seven in the morning drinking a lot of coffee. And I recorded all of them right where the edit was supposed to go. Now, when Seg gets there, oh, all of that, all of that stuff that I got to do, you know, cutting and chopping and all that, Seg already got it. Here's the show. This is what's going to go on. I sent it to you by We Transfer, download it, and that's what it is. I said, all right, where you want to, you know, you want to stop it here? Stop it there. After what song do you want to stop and talk? He was like, oh, we ain't got to do all that. Just keep, just pay attention to my eyes and we're going to rock out. And and that's exactly how it happened. When Seg came, he was like the franchise quarterback coming back from, a, you know, suspension or something. He stepped right in and, and, and it went from there. And he also made me, you know, step my game up because I want to impress Seg G. Just like I wanted to impress Cool Keith. And, and, and I was on my best behavior through this whole tour. So they was getting good, positive encouragement from me, even in situations where, see, because they were on tour before. They've been to all of these places before. So at certain times, maybe due to their age, because, you know, I'm, I'm younger than those dudes in spirit and in, in real numbers. <laughs> so I would, it's rare that I'm the encourager, though. But being in that van, and I was so excited and happy to be seeing all these different places. I, I was fucking flying on the moon. So, so I'm sure that 
I brought good energy to everybody there. There was some, you know, Tough Crew, Tough Crew had a another group in the Netherlands, and they were called King B. They had an album called Royal Jelly, and the dude's name is Guam Elm Zoon, All Star Fresh. So he was at the Amsterdam show, and he seemed a little bit like he didn't know how I was going to react because the songs that they made sort of did better numbers than Tough Crew. But people overseas were saying that, oh, they bit Tough Crew and, you know, they biters and all this. We were talking about the biting thing on the NWA segment. But I met them and I was gracious and I was happy to see them because, you know, they're stars to me because they paid homage to Tough Crew and actually made an album that sounded exactly like Tough Crew and had people asking me, yo, did y'all release a new album? And I'm like, no, what are you talking about? So I got to meet them, All Star Fresh, and I'm a shout out. And there was a, a number of other people, Lady Ultra. I didn't know it was a lady member of Ultra, LJ. And, and she came and, and spit. She also was probably going to spit at Urban Matters. I'll be back at Urban Matters back overseas on September 4th this year. I know I was, I've been talking a lot through this interview. So I was excited talking about that. Hey, I love them Ultra dudes, man. She was insane. Insane. Yes. And that being said, I don't think... You know, I've had the fortune of getting Sid G on Unique Access a couple of times and shout out to him as always. But I don't think he gets the recognition for being such a great rapper and producer. Mm -hmm. So seeing him and being with him and touring with him, what extra uh, realization did you get for his talent seeing it in person? Like, did you understand why he's such a good producer? Why he's such a yes. good architect? Like, how did that happen? I went up to Sid's room. He said, come up. I got the last two songs. He wanted to swap them out. He was doing remixes of shit like on the fly. And I'm sure that for the first part of the tour that he missed, he was probably home working furiously. Maybe, maybe you know, beating himself up a little bit and taking it out on the tracks. Because he came with remixes for like Funky. There was a whole nother slowed down remix that got the whole show changed up once Sid came. Like I said, not not detrimentally saying anything about any of the other members, but it has to be Cool Keith and Sad G. And even the crowds at some of the early shows were saying, Sad ain't there. And, they, you know, they were bitching. And we were doing our best to compensate until he arrived. We knew he was going to arrive, but we didn't know when. A, a complete change. I can attribute it like a football team, like I was talking about earlier, you know, when the, when the starting quarterback comes in, even even when he's the undisputed leader of Ultra Magnetic. And I felt right into line with him, too. And I felt more comfortable and that I had to do less of the standing on my head as the goalie. Now that now that says showed up, I don't have to stand on my head so much. I could just I could just rock naturally. And it all kind of came together in Dusseldorf. The last show in Germany, it was a gigantic place. It was the by far the biggest of the shows that we did and the most crowded. It was just packed. So everybody had a had a really good time. Um so what do you how or what did you learn and how is this affecting what you're gonna be doing moving forward? I definitely learned how to adjust and grow on the fly. I learned to try to stay in the moment. One of the one of the best things that I was able to do, and I, I said I was going to do it, but I wasn't sure if I can do it, was to bring good energy to everybody throughout the event, throughout the show. For me, it was a dream come true. For other people, they may have had to rearrange certain parts of their life that were difficult. Obviously, for said to get there, he had to do a lot of shit with the passport agency and all of that, and whether whether it should have been done before that or, or, or it happened the way that it is, that was the way you know, the situation played out in real life. I don't think I ever had to jump over so many obstacles before. And I don't think I ever had so much fun jumping over obstacles, knowing that I was going to jump the obstacle while I was anticipating the next obstacle and trying to make it a little bit easier for me to either launch or easier for me to land from, from having just did it. Um, I found that staying at the venue after sound check, which is usually three or four hours, five hours sometimes before the show actually starts. I found that for me, staying there benefited me immensely because I didn't have to 
go back to the hotel, sit in a room by myself, pace. You know, I want to kind of experience the crowd and the show. It's the first time I've ever been to these countries. I may never be back to any of these countries. I got to. So the most important thing is stay in the moment, stay in the current moment of what's going on. Take a minute to breathe some air in, in Germany or, you know, what I mean, put your hands in the water in Copenhagen, you know, maybe even splash it on your face. I met two swans. I was taking flowers to put it into the water because my girl asked me to put flowers in the water for her mom because her family is from Copenhagen area. So I found water. There was other things to find there. There were there were. Hey, maybe more enticing, but definitely more dangerous. There was a lot of drugs. A dude tried to sell me crack in Belgium. He was in a wheelchair. There was a lot of a lot of street people in Copenhagen, you know, right there. I made the nice left, and I went and found a body of water, and I had a nice moment with two swans that swam over to me. It's like two in the morning. So my sight soaring, my, my sight soaring, my sightseeing events only took place between like two and four in the morning or seven in the morning and 10, because that was like check out of the hotel time. So now we're all carrying the bags. Everybody's cranky. They don't want to get up that early in the morning. Everybody been drinking and smoking and all of that the night before. I'm wandering cities at 4 a.m., but I'm the happiest motherfucker there. Trust me. I was bringing good energy on an early morning one and everything. I became real good friends with T.R. Love, and he had an injury to his leg. He cracked his kneecap, so he was there with a a brace, you know, and he performed on stage with the brace as well. Cool Keith was calling him Gimpy when we first got to the airport. And, I, you know, I just I stayed impartial to that one. I didn't want to take sides. I didn't know them that well yet. But after 20 days with these dudes, it was like a life changing event. I came back. I'm still riding high off the wave of the energy of, of just interacting with Seth and, and Keith. And, and just I'm supposed to go out to Harlem. And, and spend a day with Cool Keith. He told me to come by myself, and that's the part that has me scared. Why? <laughs> why? Well, if you were just with Cool Keith for twenty days, you'll know why I'm supposed to be scared. No, but Cool Keith is Cool Keith. Really, is like came here from another galaxy. No, I've been around him many, many yeah, times. That's, that's <laughs> out of mad respect. Out of mad respect because he got he got the answers to questions that we didn't even ask yet. Right. He's a very I love Cool Keith. Very distinctive guy. Very, very. Um, let me see if I got a cool Keith story for you. Oh, we get to Manchester, and, and I came in. I see Cool Keith at the front desk, and he's arguing with the with the hotel guy. He was like, "Yo, the room that I got, it just looks straight at a brick wall. I can't see nothing. I got to change my room and all this." So I got an Instagram. Look at Cool Keith. He don't want. He got to change his room. I go to my room. And I got the panoramic view with a fucking ship in front of me and water and all of this. I said, holy shit, how, how does this work? I said, I can't tell him. He's going to be even madder. Actually, I was going to knock on his door and be like, yo, look at the view I got. <laughs> there were so many different moments like that, just being on the road with Cool Keith. He loves Kentucky Fried Chicken. He likes to stop at road stops. He bought a lot of bucket hats. Goose down jackets, different pairs of sneaks. He likes to shop. He, I think he's a better shopper than Kanye West. Hmm. <laughs> well, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, DJ Too Tough, anything else you want to add about the Ultra Magnetic Tour before we bounce? Well, we would love to come back. All the people over there that didn't get to said, see said G perform at the first nine. Of course, I'll take this time to, to say that we appreciate the, the love and, and putting up with the with the obstacles that we had to you know encounter and jump over. It was an incredible experience for me. I know that, that the, I left a, a nice impact on people over there. I made a whole lot of friends, and I found out that I had friends over there that I, that I just hadn't met yet. I saw, I saw a lot of people in the crowd whose faces looked like people that I knew. And I had really good interactions because after the shows were over, I stuck around to sign all of the autographs and I accepted all of the free drugs from all of the people that gave me free drugs. Salute to everybody that gave me free drugs, you know, in Europe and the UK. <laughs> it was an incredible time, man. I'm so happy to, to have done another interview with you and be able to be happy and, and candid flying high off the energy of ultra magnetic, man. Thank you so much, sir. Nah, well, congratulations. And, uh, hopefully you'll get to do something like that again soon, man. DJ yeah, me too, too man. I hope so. DJ too tough. Thanks as always, man.
Peace, brother. Peace and love. Unique access.